Thank you. Thank you. I'll now recognize Mr. Donalds for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I think it's actually a, a good jumping off point from my colleagues' uh, comments about uh, potential concerns of displacement. I, I think that, you know, as we looked at the evolutions of our economy over the last 150 years, we've always hit these inflection points when there was a disruptive new technology or process for how large swaths of our economy operated, and there's always a concern about displacement. I think that um, the, I think the difference now is that seeing the evolutions of AI, which quite frankly are just starting, and we're, 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 there's gonna be things we're gonna be talking about in a decade we wouldn't even be thinking about today in this hearing. I think it's more about making sure that, our, that kids going through the K-12 system primarily, but then also through higher education, um, are learning how to leverage AI and these tools to actually become far more productive, far more innovative, and then as a byproduct, having their labor become, be able to have a different set of value in the economy to come. And, and I think that uh, it's an interesting thing, uh, human beings and human psychology, we always try to find a way to have purpose regardless of whatever the dynamics are that are operating on the field to play of our economy. Uh, one of the largest data center operators in my home state of Florida, uh, Equinix, was the first data center to partner with an SMR provider, Oklo. These nuclear small modular reactors can generate at least uh, 500 megawatts of power to our energy grid and to power uh, data centers. Uh, Mr. Bakjaratari, I think I got that right. That's not right. <laughs> Close. My apologies. Uh, can you share some ideas on how Congress and the Trump administration can accelerate the safe deployment of clean, advanced nuclear energy and AI data centers to support our growing energy and computing demands? Thank you so much for your question. I think in the last couple of months, we have seen a really a clear linkage between you know, advancing AI and AI models and reliance on new uh, models, modes of energy. I think uh, my organization really is focused on the development of fusion energy, for example, because I think one of the pathways that now is showing real great success in our country is the emergence of private sector companies that are showing incredible successful models of how to get to fusion energy. We also have the national labs that have made major breakthroughs. You know, the Lawrence Livermore National Ignition Facility in 2022 have made the first fusion breakthrough. So I think in particular to your question, fusion is one of the pathways that I think can enable the energy demand that we will face going forward when it comes to AI models, but that's not gonna be enough alone. So I think we should pursue multiple pathways because we wanna be energy independent and we wanna have the best models available to the world. Um, Mr. Th uh, Thier, Thier? Thier. I'm, not, I'm not having a good day. <laughs> uh, Mrs., Mr. Thier, uh, with the establishment of the special advisor for AI and crypto, what are some of the recommendations or priorities related to artificial intelligence that you would like to see them pursue? Well, one of them is what you just asked about, Congressman, which is making sure that America has energy independence and a greater diversity of energy sources to power the algorithmic revolution. And this is something the Trump administration has taken uh, steps to address with executive orders and other things like that. That's, that's crucial. Uh, obviously, uh, a crucial part will also be the development of a national framework for artificial intelligence policy, just as we had for the internet before. We need to address this conflicting patchwork of policies that's developing. That's something the administration and this Congress is obviously concerned with. And then there's a variety of other things having to do with national security matters and other investments in various types of uh, algorithmic and robotic systems that are really, really crucial, among many, many other things that Congress and the administration are trying to do. Uh, last point, I really, I'll just throw this out to the panel. I was sitting with my colleague, Mr. Perry, we were just kind of theorizing about what type of advantages um, uh, AI advancements, as well as, you know, I guess you could say um, quantum computing, what, what that could actually do to modernize and streamline uh, governmental operations, not just federal, but state and local. Um, just in your own expert opinions, what do you think the possibilities are in terms of how it would essentially help to redesign, streamline, and, and bring greater amounts of efficiency into the federal government? Like, where do you think is a good place to start, I guess I would say? Yeah, I would say that um, you know, if you think about this new technology of agentic AI, it allows for a new kind of automation. We've been building automation for several decades, but a lot of it was very uh, brittle. 
And if something slightly changed under the hood, all of a sudden, you know, that automation would no longer work. With Agentic AI, you can actually overcome a lot of that by having these very, you know, smart, intelligent reasoners and systems that can then go and do the levels of automation that we haven't been able to do before. And I think what that's going to do is really elevate all of us to be able to work on less mundane things and more sort of advanced thinking and, and, and creative ideas. All right. I'm out of time, everybody. Thanks so much. I yield back.